boys and girls. I'm here with the kids today. Hi. And today we decided to tackle a few outside projects. I thought today would be a great day to make a video as we do our projects because measurement will play a huge part in everything we do. Our first project is to plant some flowers around this lamp post here. So let's take a look at how we will use measurement to help us plant flowers. The first thing we're going to do is measure a circle around this lamp post so we can dig a nice little bed for our garden. Sometimes when I use measurement outside, I look for an exact, precise measure, and sometimes it's okay to estimate. For this purpose today, I need an exact measure, because if at any point when I measure it's off, then my circle won't be a perfect circle. So I, I decided that I want my circle to be 16 inches from the lamppost at all points. So what Jackson is going to do is he is going to measure to exactly 16 inches from the lamppost and spray paint a circle and then dig. Now, I wanted to point something out. Notice that at some points there are black lines, some points pink, and some points blue. Now in second grade you learned about inches and you measured everything to the nearest whole inch. Now in third grade we learned that there's actually numbers between the inches. There's halves of inches and there's fourths of inches. So what I did on my ruler is I highlighted each quarter inch or each one fourth inch in pink so it's really easy for me to quickly see. And I highlighted each half inch in green so those are easy to see too. So Jackson is going to have to realize that we want the measure exactly at the 16 inch point. If he goes even just a little bit too far, it becomes 16 and 1 fourth inch. Hey, this reminds me of when we counted on the number line. It's the same type of thing. 1 fourth, 2 fourth, 3 fourths, 1 whole, 1 and 1 fourth, 1 and 2 fourths, one and three fourths, two holes. So this next spot is just a little more than two whole inches, so that would be two and one fourth inch. Or we could say two and two fourths inches. And we know that two fourths is equal to one half, so this would be two and a half inches. So let's see if Jackson can correctly use our ruler to measure 16 inches all the way around the lamppost. Hey Jackson, is that precisely 16 inches from the lamppost or is that just an estimate? It's precisely because 16 is exactly where the dot is. Okay, all right, thank you buddy. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, that was a way bigger job than we planned. I had to chop up a whole bunch of tree roots and dig that circle, but we have it done. And now we have this beautiful circle and we're ready to plant some flowers. Beginning of this video, I was talking about sometimes it's okay to make estimates when measuring, and sometimes you have to be really precise. Now, when we measured the circle, thanks, sweet pea. When we measured the circle, we had to be very precise to make sure each point of the circle was the same distance from the lamppost. Now, think about this: the directions for these flowers say the flowers need to be planted eight inches apart, so they'll have plenty of room to grow. For this, do I have to be exactly precise to get them eight inches apart, or can I make an estimate? For this, I'm going to actually make an estimate. It's okay if they're eight and a half, eight and three fourths inches apart, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm, instead of pulling out my ruler, I'm going to use my benchmark or my visual for one inch, which is the end of my thumb, and I'm just going to measure them out about eight inches. Remember when we measure, just like when we found area, we want to make sure there's no gaps or overlaps between our inches. So here's my first plant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, well that's about eight inches. So we'll plant it, thank you sweet pea, we'll plant it right about there and we'll keep going. All right, we're finally finished with this project right here. It only took about two hours. Now we're ready to move on to something else. Boys and girls, we just made a discovery of this worm right here as we were digging. Ellie, I thought it might be fun. <laughs> I thought it might be fun to measure this worm to see just how long he is. So let's take a look. All right. So it looks like hmm, two inches. 
He is, well, you think he's going to be two inches? Is that your estimate? Yeah. Let's see. We're a little bit over. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's, oh, what? another bug. Wait, watch out, watch out. Well, what? when he's curled up, it looks what? like oh, he's about three fourths of an inch. Let's see if we can uncurl this little guy and see if we can get a perfect measurement. And it looks like when he's uncurled, he's about one and one fourth, one and two fourth. I'm going to say he's about one and three fourths inches long. So he's not quite two inches. So he's right here around this pink spot when he gets uncurled. So that would be one and one fourth, two fourths, three fourths of an inch. In third grade, we learned that objects aren't always an exact whole number of inches in length. For example, this worm appears to be a little bit longer than two inches, but not quite three inches. Here, we can try breaking up that inch between two and three into fractions of an inch. Let me see if I can break this into halves and see if that will work. Okay, well now it looks like that should work. It looks like our worm is one whole inch, two whole inches, plus another half inch. Our worm is two and one half inches long. Let's take a look at another example. Here, the worm is a little bit longer than two inches, not quite three inches, but it even looks a little bit longer than two and a half inches. Let's take that inch between two and three inches and break it into fourths this time. Yep, that seems like it will work. Now, we can say that the worm is one whole inch plus a second whole inch plus one fourth of an inch, another fourth, and another fourth. Our worm is two and three fourths of an inch long. And now for your challenges. After I pose each challenge, pause the video to solve, press play when you're ready to continue. Here's challenge one. How long is this caterpillar? Hint, be sure to measure the caterpillar from end to end. Here's challenge two. How tall is this insect? Make sure you measure from the bottom all the way to the very top of the insect. This last challenge is a bit different. Now that the kids and I are finished planting flowers, we want to decorate our front porch. I've asked Jackson to pick out some items for the porch, but first he needs to decide when he needs to find precise measurements for these items and when he can estimate. After I tell you what each item is, pause the video to decide if Jackson should estimate or if he must find a precise measurement for the item. First, we need to measure for a new doorknob. Now, there's already a hole cut in the door, so the new doorknob has to fit the old hole. Next, we want some sort of door decoration. I don't know, maybe a basket or a new wreath. Then, we would like a rug. The rug must span all the way across the porch, and we would like it to go from wall to wall. Lastly, I'd like to put something in the corner here. My kids tend to throw their toys and shoes and everything else in the corner, so I need something to fancy it up a bit. If you haven't already, at this point, pause the video and decide for which of these items must Jackson measure precisely, and for which items can Jackson just estimate the space in which they are going. Well, here's the finished product. I think Jackson did a great job. Have a good day, boys and girls.